Set against the backdrop of the Saskatchewan River Valley, the Beaver Flat 50 is one of the toughest and hilliest trail races around. But you might be asking, Saskatchewan has hills? It turns out that it does. In fact, the 50K race has over 2,200 meters of elevation gain. The prairies may be flat, but this course is anything but. So it's Friday night and I'm in a little city called Swift Current, which is about two and a half hours west of Regina, the capital of Saskatchewan. I flew into Regina this morning. I actually managed to have lunch with my aunt there before driving over to Swift Current here. Uh, the race is actually taking place about a half an hour out of town in the park, um, but we're here for check-in, bib pickup, and then I'm gonna stay tonight in a hotel here, and then I get up early and drive out to the race. N96 and N96. Okay. Love it. All right, thank you. So it's the morning of the race and I just arrived at the start line here at Saskatchewan Landing Provincial Park. And it's crazy windy today. We're expecting sustained winds of about 30 kilometers per hour with gusts up to 60 kilometers per hour. But it's also supposed to be really warm. When I checked the weather yesterday morning, they saw lows of zero degrees Celsius and highs in maybe the upper teens. But today we're gonna hit 30 degrees Celsius. So I'm hoping that the wind is gonna help counteract the heat. My friend Mike Siddick, another Vancouver runner, did mention the wind. He ran this race a few years ago. In fact, he has the course record. He was telling me it's a hilly course, there's some steep downhills, lots of off-route kind of stuff, and it's all exposed. So it should be a lot of fun.
Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, pretty flat there, so we got one, two hills in the city that you just run up and down as many times as you can, and it's about as much elevation as you can get without traveling outside the city too far. So this is a hilly race for you? This is very hilly. This is this is about the sum of all my elevation training throughout the year <laughs> in one day, so nice. we'll see how it goes. My mom's from Melville. Oh, really? Yeah, so I, I've, I've been out here like tons. Oh, that's crazy. Growing up. My dad's from Melville, that's funny. Oh, really? And my mom's from Yorkton, so. Oh, I have family in Yorkton, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my whole side of the my mom's side of the family is all out here, yeah, so. Right. A small town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We got what, snakes, cactus? Snakes, cactus, uh, hot weather, dry sand. Yeah. Oh, we have wasps too. Oh no. Oh good. Now that we don't have to carry bears today. Climbing up onto the next ridge. Bit longer to get warmed up today. I think I'm still feeling fatigued from my 100 miler four weeks ago, which is no surprise. But today's more of a training run. This is the part where I, where I sandbag, where I make up excuses. But uh, this really is more of a training run for my next race, which is coming up at the end of October in Namibia, a seven day stage race, which is basically a series of 40k and up to 80k races over the course of seven days. It's important to have clear objectives for a race like this. Um, for example, if I was feeling myself developing an injury, I would stop today because it's not my goal race. But yeah, today is mostly about training and having fun. It looks like that's where we're going next. Starting from the campsite in Saskatchewan Landing Provincial Park, the course follows several big loops along a series of ridges, in and out of deep ravines or coulées, and along plateaus on the edge of wheat fields, which are much more typical of the Saskatchewan landscape. The name of the province comes from the Saskatchewan River, whose Cree name is Kisiskatchewani Sipi, meaning swiftly flowing river. And it's this river that shaped the valley and surrounding hills, ridges, and rock formations where the race takes place. The location is believed to be a former Meti River crossing and part of the historic 300 kilometer long Swift Current Battleford Trail an important late 19th century trade route which likely was used previously by First Nations to travel between the area around the town of Battleford in the winter and the rich bison hunting grounds around Swift Current to the north in the summer. My mom grew up on a farm in Melville, a small city just outside of Regina, so I visited the province quite a few times over the years. Growing up, I always loved the feeling of being lost at sea on its rolling terrain, 
with waves of wheat, canola, and mustard seed as far as the eye can see. my salt pills with me for this race like I usually do so I think those pickles are gonna be a lifesaver for me today those ravines when the wind dies down. maybe the 10k route. Drop. It's beautiful. Nice All colors. Nice shot. Thank you so much. 
Asia. Buddy Ronnie up there from Vancouver, all from Squamish. Ronnie, how's it going? Starting to feel the heat. water, some watermelon, an orange, and some ice under my hat. I'm gonna do wonders.
So we're just over halfway, about uh, close to 26k here. Uh, it's pretty warm, but the wind's keeping it feeling somewhat reasonable. Ice is helping under the hat. I think I'm pacing it well. It's hard to say. I haven't run a 50k in four years. I've only been doing 50 mile, 100 and 200 plus mile races. So I kind of forget how to pace these things. Right about now is when I'll probably start picking people off and hopefully working my way up towards the closer to the front of the field, but we'll see. Still lots of race left. It's been really runnable. So I'm actually enjoying these short, punchy climbs. Any chance to stop and take a quick walk break is nice. Because otherwise, it's just a lot of running. It's a really fast course and lots of fun so far. This place is like none other in Saskatchewan because it is shaped by the Saskatchewan River. You get a mountain race in the middle of the prairies and it is wild, it is absolutely wild. In 2019 we had people from Europe, uh, runners from China, runners from the US, and of course all over Canada come and, and run the race. People love it, it's just hard and crazy and fun and fast. Well, the clouds burned off and it's getting pretty warm, especially when the wind dies down here in the lower lands. The name of the game today is to finish as fast as I can before it hits 30 degrees. Just over 30k. Uh, see the aid station just up ahead. I'm gonna continue to run this next 9k or so. Pretty smart, you know, try to stay on top of my hydration. I'm not gonna push it too much. And then once I hit 40k, I'll be pretty much home free. That last 10k, I can pretty much just run on adrenaline. So I've just gotta make it to 40k feeling good. And then I should be able to finish feeling really strong. Hi there. Thanks guys. See ya. Oh, a bunch more ice under the hat. That feels good. I drank a bunch of water. I had Coke. I have ice in my flask now too. It's getting really hot out here, so <laughs> it's all about heat management from here on in. Um, I've got a bit of food for the road here as well.
man. How's it going? It's hot, eh? Where are you from? Uh, Regina now. From Regina, from Saskatoon. Yeah. from Saskatoon. Have you run this before? I have, yeah. Is it always this hot? Uh, it wasn't this hot last time. No. So I came into it trying to race. Yeah. I think it's survival now, it's not a race. dry. I think there's an aid station right up here though, so I'm gonna drink a bunch and then I've got like 8k left. I got this in the bag. Hey, hey guys. Hey. Happy to see you. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Yeah. See you later. See you. Yeah. Oh, that felt good. They just doused me in cold water with a sponge. Poured it down my back, on my forearms, which felt really good. I have ice under my hat, I got ice in my bottles, and I got some salt tablets. I had a bunch of watermelon. And the best news of all, I only have seven kilometers left. So let's put a fork in this, because I'm cooked. So zen. Enjoy your last few kilometers. Thank you. It's so peaceful. Hey man, how's it going? We're almost there. Yeah. Looking good.
there were 87 finishers of the 147 who started the race. And top finishing times were about a half an hour longer than usual thanks to the heat. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Great course. Awesome day out there. I may have saved a bit of time by not filming, but likely wouldn't have made up the 18 minutes between myself and third place without digging pretty deep. So it's the morning after the race, and I'm just on my way back to Regina to hop on my flight back to Vancouver, and I thought I'd do a little debrief on how the race went. Uh, let's start with the event itself. So super well organized, the race directors clearly know what they're doing, the aid stations were well spaced and really well stocked. Uh, there was lots of ice, tons of water, which really helped with the heat that we had, really great volunteers, no complaints whatsoever. Uh, it was a little bit of a convoluted course with a bunch of loops and a few out and backs, uh, you know, lots of intersections. I don't think there was a single time though where I felt confused or lost at all. Now the course itself was a lot of fun, lots of short punch climbs and steep descents, uh, you know, with, with plenty of runnable terrain in, in between. I probably ran 90 to 95% of the course and hiked the rest. Uh, so overall, really runnable. Um, not too technical, the trails, which was nice. You know, you could kind of just turn off your brain and just enjoy it. Um, lots of views. You could always see around you. You could always see the next climb and see runners over at different ridges, especially when we merged up with the 10K course. So that was really cool. It kept it interesting. Uh, never boring, never a dull moment. Um, I didn't use my poles and I don't know, it's debatable. Um, I think if you don't have a lot of climbing in your legs, I'd probably recommend using poles. Uh, but for me, it was kind of on that, right on the cusp where I didn't want to have to carry them. And, you know, I did, as I say, I ran most of it. So I probably would have been carrying them more than I, than I would have used them. So I think I'm happy with my decision to leave the poles at home. Um, I only carried a liter of water. I probably could have used a liter and a half in a couple of spots, um, but you know, it was an exceptionally hot day. So I think normally, I think a liter would be fine. But the wind, the wind was something else. You can probably see here, my eyes are quite bloodshot and that's just from the dust just hammering me all day. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of wind burned. Uh, I felt like I was getting blown off the trail uh, a few times up in the ridge. So that definitely made for an interesting challenge. Um, you know, headwind in some parts, but that turned into a tailwind in others. Having said that, I think the wind helped to keep temperatures somewhat reasonable. I am, you know, I, I heard it got well over 30 degrees. Um, some say up to 35 potentially especially in some of those little valleys where you know the wind would die down you really felt the heat so I think given how hot it was I'm glad we had the breeze that we did now as far as my execution goes I think I executed well um, as I had mentioned it was more of a training run for me I was kind of just out there to have fun and see how I felt and by about the 30 35 K mark I realized that I still had legs so I started to kind of pick people off and I think the fact that I went out a little bit easier really helped me I think some of the people up, up at the front um, maybe went out a little bit harder given the conditions and paid the price later on. So I think actually going into it with a little bit more of a casual attitude actually served me really well and allowed me to finish really strong. Now, would I come back? I think I will. Um, you know, it was a really fun course, as I mentioned, really different. Um, it's very similar to Yakima 50K or even Sun Mountain uh, 50K down in Washington State. Those are put on by Rain Shadow Running, uh, both really great events. And, you know, it's just different than what we have out on the coast. And who would I recommend this race to? I'd say it's a good first 50K. I mean, it was a challenging course, but it's well supported. Um, you know, I think it would make for, for a good 50K, but also for anybody who wants to come and run a hard, fast 50 50k that still has a fair bit of climbing for people who don't live in the mountains and want a real challenge uh, you know it'd be a really great experience but also for those who do I think you could do quite well in a course like this. So thanks very much to the race directors. Thanks to all the incredible volunteers. Thanks to Solomon, the title sponsor. And uh, I'm going to take a couple days down and then I'm back into my training because I've got another big race coming up at the end of October. 